The completion of the first transcontinental railroad in 1869, joining the East with California in its vast natural resources, set off a second great railroad building boom. Railroads were already big business and would become even bigger with the long overdue step taken six years earlier. In 1863, the U.S. Congress passed an act setting the standard gauge to be used by railroads for the width of their track at four feet eight and one half inches. Back in the uh, er, uh, middle 1800s, when uh, railroads first came to the United States, uh, we here in the U.S. decided to copy what was called standard gauge throughout all of England, and that was four feet eight and a half inches. Um, that would be from the inside of this rail all the way over to the inside of this outer rail of the three rails that we see here. That's standard gauge. That standard gauge is four feet eight and a half inches. In one fell swoop, this standard gauge made knitting the country together with an interconnected railroad network a real possibility. The second factor stimulating the second railroad boom was land grants. The government gave away about 175 million acres altogether, which is more or less the size of Texas. Uh, now it's all scattered. It's, it's, uh, by and large, the uh, land grant is the western half of the United States. The Union Pacific builders of the eastern half of the Transcontinental Railroad received over 13 million acres of that free land. If that weren't enough motivation to build new western railroads, then another $23 million was. Money Union Pacific executives pocketed through their construction company, which laid the track. By 1893, there would be four new transcontinental rail lines, two flanking each side of the first one. To the north, Jay Cook's Northern Pacific, connected Duluth, Minnesota, with Tacoma, Washington. Begun in 1870, Tacoma wasn't reached until 1888. J.J. Hill's Great Northern Railway, started in 1879, spanned the northern tier of states from Minneapolis, Minnesota, to Seattle, Washington, laying the last rail in 1893. To the south, the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railway started construction in 1859 in Topeka, Kansas, and reached San Diego, California 27 years later, while Leland Stanford Southern Pacific, connecting Los Angeles, California with New Orleans, began laying track in 1865 and was completed in 1883. Hi, I'm Bill Ambrose. If you like this video, subscribe so we can bring you more programming from our studio. Thank you for subscribing.